Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of The Real Juggle. I am so grateful that you decided to join me this week. And um, this week is about commitments. And I committed to all of you that as part of The Real Juggle, I'll not only you know share stories and have conversations, but I would also share some tips and some tricks to helping us you know, get through all of this and get through the juggle that we all deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So today's episode is going to do just that. I, um, I've had quite a week. I don't know about you guys. I should wish you a happy St. Patrick's Day. Kiss me, I'm Irish. Um, hopefully everyone is um, enjoying their St. Patrick's Day. What is it? Corned beef and cabbage. You know, it's so, it's so weird because everybody celebrates. And so the poor kids, they're in school, they get cornbread and, uh, you know, corned beef and cabbage. They come home, they get corned beef and cabbage. They go out. So let's not OD. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing that happens during the holidays where everybody's serving holiday Thanksgiving meals. And then when Thanksgiving comes, nobody wants to eat it. But um, in any case, enjoy your uh, St. Patrick's Day. I hope you are having a great week. I actually, some of you may have seen online, took a very mini quick vacation, but it definitely did the trick of rejuvenating me, um, you know, over the last couple of days. So I'm hoping that everybody is feeling equally excited. But what comes with that, what comes with getting a bit of a break is, you know, all of a sudden you, I got all this energy to just like get organized and to just like get things together. I've got appointments and meetings and I don't know about you guys, but I have a lot of paperwork and papers that need to be organized and filed. So I said, what would be good to discuss this week? We are almost done with the first quarter of the new year. You know, what would be great? And I thought about a good friend of mine who is so amazing. She is an HR professional with a specialization in talent acquisition, um, a diversity, equity, and inclusion advocate and professional. And she is also a mother of two children and an entrepreneur. You may know her as the founder of KB Plan. So you can take a look at at KB Plans is her handle, but I invited her on today. Christina, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having so me. So excited, of course, of course. So one of the things that I thought about when I said, I really wanna get organized and maybe I can share that with the listeners and the viewers on you know, where do you start and how do you do this? One thing that I thought about was how I feel when my space is not in the right spot. So if I have clothes to wash, if my car looks like I've been in it all week with like extra shoes and my changes and the kids things, yeah. it wears on me. I feel different. Yeah. Like, can, can you relate to that? Do you feel different when your space isn't where it needs to be? Yes. And, and I'll tell you, as someone who's worked from home for 12 years, um, every part of my space needs to be in order. I'm not a perfectionist. I don't consider myself as having OCD. Um, they always say that right everything. before they show you that they're perfectionists. <laughs> but I think every, there's a place for everything, right? And so you just put everything in its place so that your day flows a little better. Um, and you can, can grab whatever you need as you go. For me, if I walk out of this office and I see clutter, then I'm instantly distracted from, you know, the things I need to do um, in the office and the workday. So, yeah, I... I I, I just want to go night night. in a major way. And, and so I do everything I can. I'm a perfectionist again, but do everything I can to stay organized. So it's interesting you say that because every organizer says that uh, a place for everything and everything in its place. But I will say that um, I had a, a home organizer come in once to just help me with my closet and so physical space. And I said, I know there's a place for everything, but if that place is over there and I'm over here, I'm going to put it over here. And she said, no, you're absolutely right. So she literally walks through with me and with the kids. So what is your routine and where do you go? And after you eat, where do you go? And when you come in, where do you go? And she started to organize the space in a way that flows with the way we flow, where we spend our time, where we normally drop the shoes or drop the bag. And she put yep. the place for these things close to where we actually need it. So is that something that you do too? Yeah, so funny you say that because I also worked with a professional organizer um, some years ago and it was weird because in my head, I'm like, I probably don't need it. I'm probably just naturally wired that way, but it was good to get a professional opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you're absolutely right. Listen, there's no one perfect system for everyone, right? Not everyone's gonna go to the container store and get the same containers, right? It just, it, that's not realistic. Um, I have 
two children, one lives at home, she's a teenager. What works for her is not gonna work for the 24, however old she is, uh, who doesn't live at home, right? right different right. mentalities, different energies. What I need is not what, what the children need. So tailoring every organization system to the person and, and where they are at that point in their life, recognizing that mm. could potentially change. Right. So what works for you and the kids now isn't going to necessarily work for you and the kids in a couple of years. Well, you know, that's a good point, because I think about how things are when you have teenagers or preteens versus when they're really little. So some of our listeners and viewers have little children and you and I know what comes with little children, all those little things, the Legos, the blocks, the, and you end up having it's like piles or bins. Yeah. So so is it a lost cause? Like how how do you still do it? You said stay organized while still being true to kind of where you are in life. Yeah, so <laughs> be, I, Christina, flexible, right? I need options. Um, you can't put me in a box. Um, and, and so while I might buy a system today or tomorrow that works for, let's say my five-year-old when she was five to house all the broken crayons and the pieces of, of Barbie, some with heads, some without, clothes, you know, all of that. So you organize them by with heads, without heads. Like, like you just... Listen, <laughs> you, we do what we gotta do, right? Um, but, but in a couple of years, I just need to be able to accept the fact that she may likely outgrow that system, okay? And plan to give it away. I don't care what method you use, you can try to sell it to a neighbor, donate it to a, a shelter, a Goodwill, whatever it is. Plan to let it go because it served the purpose that it needed to serve at that point um, and then be open to, to shifting as needed. None of us are the same person we were, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And so work then isn't working now, right? I, I didn't have this 10 or 15 years ago. I don't know what I would do without it now, um, yeah. but I certainly didn't have it, didn't need it. Uh, now I do. No, that makes, a, that makes a lot of sense. So give it away, let it go. And you know, if you won't do it for yourself, then do it for someone else because, you know, the other piece of it is donate it. So if you look at it, listen, I know I've had my use, like you said, let me donate it and give it to someone else who needs to maximize. So good advice. I need more good advice. Let's talk about planners. So there's space and then there's time. And so often with, with you know, all of the appointments and you get this right, full-time entrepreneurial endeavors, kids appointments, your own appointments, self-care, how does someone get this? like volunteer how does somebody get organized where do you start on physical that too yeah so planners i i started planning back in probably like 99 ish give or take um maybe even before then um, i invested in this pretty hefty uh franklin covey planner um, with a nice dip and the inserts. And I was like, oh, I am about this life. But prior to that, I was probably buying the little, um, you know, uh, ring bound and spiral planners from, you know, Walmart or Target or whatever it was. And I realized that I just needed something a little more detailed, right? Something um, a little more customizable, right? Just kind of that I could switch up and out and with the cute flowers. And like, I, I wanted something different. Again, what worked for me then, does it work for me now? Probably not. Um, so then I went on this planner journey over the years um, between ring bound, disc bound, um, A5, six ring. Like, I, I so that was about that. so that was about the physical size and like setup of the planner, yes. whether it's like a so, book, yeah, or like I guess like a like a spiral or okay, got it. Disc got bound it. here. This is more of like you know, a ring bound planner. Um, this is my, my chunky monkey, my A5, uh, six ring. Um, and I loved it. And, and I'll tell you what came along with that. Um, an expense, a lot of paper, a lot of different inserts. I signed up for all these subscription boxes so I could have the latest and greatest mm -hmm. habit trackers, um, and all that fun stuff. And here I am for the first time in my life at, uh, I won't say the age in my oh, 40s just thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm deep in the 40s. No, not quite. Uh, but I decided I need this. Something I can tuck in my bag. Something that doesn't involve like the amount of paper. So now, is that a digital though? Or is that a hard copy? This is my okay. iPad. And so this year I decided to go digital. I don't think I will go back. I never say never because again, we change. Our needs change over time. 
Um, but I'm loving this digital planner space. It provides me with- So let's answers. break this down for the listeners because I want I, yeah. I want you to talk about the digital. So yeah. there are the hard copy physical planners, which like you said, depending upon where you are in life service purpose. So for me, um, I would do a lot of my planning um, next to my bed. And I didn't necessarily yeah. want like the light and staying up. So the yeah. physical planner helps me. The other thing is I am a tried and true believer that physically writing does something. It just codifies it and like confirms. So, so I like the writing. I like to move the pages. So there is a room for the physical. But to your point, with volume and the need in the car at a meeting remotely, the mobile is helping. So talk us through this new thing because when I think planners, I go to Staples or somewhere, like you said, at Target, and I just pick up a planner, but yes. digital is a whole new world. So <laughs> talk digital. So it's a whole new world for someone like me who has, has been a planner addict for years. Um, and when I say planner addict, I mean, I have um, probably... 60, roughly, give or take, happy planner sticker books, right? Roughly $15, $20 a pop. Um, I have three or four agenda covers that can run you anywhere from one to 150 um, each, Um, plus the ring bag. Wait, 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 100 to 150? Yeah, a good solid leather agenda cover. It's like, we're about about to start um, Planners Anonymous. And you're gonna have to say, my name is Christina Butler and I'm addicted to planners. Major addiction, major okay. addiction, but I loved it. And I love paper and I still love paper, right? So there's a system I still use for paper, which would be my budget planner, but that's okay. a whole other story. Um, still love paper, still journal on paper, um, but I wanted to streamline my life, right? So I started thinking through this whole less is more, less is liberation thought process um, and looking at all the stuff I have and stuff I've accumulated over the years, planners being one of them, stickers being one of them. Now I buy a sticker, I can use it 15, 20, you know, 30, 40, 50, times, however many times I want to use it. So you do digital stickers now. So everything, okay, so everything that you did in the physical form now, you just, just like a word application, like you would open up word, you open up your, and is it an app that you? Yeah. So I have a good notes app and then there are a number of phenomenal um, digital planner uh, creators who create inserts and create digital planners um, for this amazing community that I think is growing significantly um, over the years. And, and you simply plug that into a good notes app. Um, I have an iPad, what do I have, a 2021 or something like that, 11 inch, Mm -hmm. Um, and it just works perfectly. I even went and purchased the uh, pen because it helps me with the coloring. And I'm not creative. (laughs) I don't know about the not creative part because I've seen on your Instagram, some of your pictures (laughs) with the little lady on the side and somebody was like, is that your handwriting? Because it was so, your fonts. So take us slowly. Talk to, like Denzel said, talk to us like we're a five-year-old. So you can leverage it for your mobile app or for an Apple. Is it Android or? Probably. I can't imagine everyone has an iPad. I'm fairly certain if you have one of these tablets, you can can, can plug in a um, sort of like an editable PDF app um, and and put, uh, uh, yeah, and put a a planner. It's it's accessible. Like we'll figure it out. It's accessible. So let's focus Apple. We'll just focus Apple products. So um on your mobile or on your iPad, you have the Good Notes app, and then explain to people why you would need different inserts. What are the what could one insert have on it for planning that another one doesn't? And then maybe we'll share with our listeners and the viewers. Yeah. You can look at samples of this online. Yeah, absolutely. So and 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 certainly on Instagram, always uh, capturing. Um, samples of the inserts I use, but there's some that have habit trackers, right? Um, Are you tracking your habits every week? Are you tracking them every month? You know, do you need a separate insert for that? There are like someone, I don't know, you just came back from vacation. I'm getting ready to go on vacation. There's a a packing list and a travel planner. You'd want an insert for that, right? To make sure you have all your ducks in a row and, and a great checklist and your flight information. There's a monthly spread where you can capture your appointments I'll tell you, Jackie, I still use my phone, um, you know, when I'm at appointments, I'll plug an appointment in, I use my phone as my monthly spread, then I yeah. refer to that each week, as I plan out the weekly spread. Um, so basically, weekly- it can take everything that's in your head, your appointments, yeah. your packing list, your grocery list, your meetings, your reminders, and put it in a neat, organized format, electronically. It's called a brain wow. dump. <laughs> Just, wow. 
just wow. It's called a brain dump. And for someone like me who has struggled with insomnia for so long, any opportunity to get the stuff out of this head and into something that I can access at a later date, you know, when the time is more appropriate, not two or three o'clock in the morning, keeping me up, then, then I'm, I'm all for it. Um, and you also brought up a good point. And, and I'll say that, I'll speak to it for a second. Um, one of the cons, right? And probably the only one I've noticed so far um, is because I, I spend my life with these monitors behind me all day. Um, and I'm wired to this phone and a work phone all day, um, that's a lot of screen time, right? And you don't necessarily wanna be wired at night. So just being intentional about setting aside time for planning um, in this iPad has been important for me so that when, it, when it's time to shut my brain off, I'm in bed and this is not next to me. Um, yeah. yeah, so coping tip, that's great. Coping tip with the juggle. You're juggling 110 different things. You're yeah. trying to prioritize. You're trying to make sure you've got your hands in everything. Get it out of here and get it onto something that helps you organize it and access it in a controlled and methodical. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Now, I just want to tap into finally the comment you made. You said you went from the physical because you had all these physical stickers and things start piling up, right? You, you lifted up with several books. You start to get a lot. And then when that month is over, that year is over, then you've got another one. So then you went to technology. What do you, talk to us a little bit around minimalism. How do you start to, <laughs> yep, I, I, I see you posting. I'm watching your post. You talk about minimalism and, you know, clearing your clutter in your space. What is it? Everybody's talking about it. so the new buzzword. What is it? Yeah. So it's being intentional about your purchases, being intentional about what you have in your space. Um, is it hmm? Does that include Amazon? Like it, everything? That felt personal. I know yeah. it didn't mean, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was right that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> get me right here. Okay, go but ahead. But I did cancel Prime. So that's how committed I am to this. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, she canceled Prime. Um, no. it's, it's really just about, um, you know, Marie Kondo talks about sparking joy, right? Is it essential? Is what you have in your space essential? Is it real? I think about this move we just made. Okay, you moved, I moved. I think about that and I wonder, had I done this prior to this move, how much money that could have saved me, right? And here's how I, I translated that into dollars. I could have gotten a smaller truck, um, less fuel, right? Less manpower to load said less truck stress, and unload less said time. truck. Less stress, less time. Um, and so now I'm looking at the things that I've accumulated over the years, book collection, that's only a small part of it. Um, the sticker collection, all the planners I still have over the years, and I'm just letting go. Part of it um, is freeing up the physical space, but it's also freeing up mental space, right? Um, if I'm not seeing it, I'm not thinking about it. It's not distracting me. It frees up time for me to focus on family, travel, making memories, things like that. So more in line with my values, right, that have shifted over the years. Um, I think what we've typically seen in the past is minimalism that's more structured and defined by a certain group, um, very white in a lot of ways, right? So white space, white walls. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's their minimalism, right? We don't allow others to define what minimalism looks like for us. So I'm on this minimalism my way journey, um, mm. holding on to what means the most to, to me. And that involves some color. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to keep that, but just be intentional about purchases going forward. A lot of what I've gotten rid of has been donated to Goodwill, um, a local shelter, you know, the domestic violence shelter is near and dear to my heart. So we've given a lot to them as well. Uh, blessing others, right? Because I've been fortunate and blessed over the years um, and also freeing up that space to just breathe a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And you start to feel lighter. No, I think that's wonderful. So we can do a whole conversation on minimalism. But what I would ask you guys to do is to follow at KB Plans. That's K-A-Y. B plans online. She's on Instagram. You can check her out, sharing a bunch of tips. Ask her, if you're watching this or listening to this, ask her to tell you more. Say, tell me more about the minimum <laughs> and follow your journey because you're early in your journey, right? Yes. And so yes. it's going to be interesting. We want to see what you purge and 
She might be giving something away that you guys might want. So just check her out as she's going through the refreshing process. Christina, I want to thank you for joining me. This has been fun. I knew it would be. Yes. I hope it's been helpful to all of you who are watching or listening. I want to thank you for taking your time because as I always say, it is not lost on me that you get to choose where you want to be and you chose to spend some time with me today. So in the meantime, until the next time we talk, be kind, be a blessing and be yourself.